In screwed news, there's a new report out by Demos that the corporate elite does not want you to know about. It's titled Retail's Hidden Potential, How Raising Wages Would Benefit Workers, the Industry, and the Overall Economy. What the report finds is that the retail industry, which employs more than a third of low-wage Americans, can more than afford to give their workers a raise. Noting the retail giants like Walmart and Target employ more than a thousand more than a million Americans and account for more than half of the four trillion dollars in revenue from the entire retail sector, Demos concludes labor compensation in the sector contributes only 12 percent of the total value of production, making payroll just a fraction of total costs. Large retailers could pay full-time year-round workers 25,000 per year and still make a profit, satisfying shareholders while rewarding their workers for the value they bring to the firm. A raise at large retailers adds $20.8 billion to payroll for the year, or less than 1% of total sales in the sector. That's a much different tune from what you hear from the corporate elite. We've seen a parade of CEOs announce layoffs since the election, arguing they just can't afford to give their employees health insurance as required by Obamacare a year from now. These are the same corporations that have seen a 77% increase in profits under President Obama, which is the highest increase in corporate profits under one president in over 100 years. So why isn't corporate America sharing the wealth with their workers? Neil Asbury joins me. He is an entrepreneur and host of the Truth for America syndicated radio show, author of the book Conscientious Equity. Neil, welcome back. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. If a major corporation can't afford to give its employees health care or a decent wage, should they be in business? Well, Tom, first of all, you mentioned about Walmart. Let's take a look at Walmart. They import products from China. They add very little value. It, it, America is at a very sad place is that, if that's where we expect our wealth is being created. But these companies that you said that uh, laid off people after the election, these are our innovators. These are no, our manufacturing. They're not. It's a small. It's a small hey, band of right-wing cranks, Neil. Uh, Bristol Myers. I mean, this is where America's wealth is created, not at Walmart. No, I'm sorry. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. Um, and and back to the question. You've got five people, five people. The 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 the, yep. the, the children of Sam Walton, who in aggregate own more wealth than the bottom 41 and a half percent of Americans, which would include but, 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 how, all of the well, workers at Walmart. Liberals. And why, how why, are they why not say, why, you beating them up for why not, not say enough is enough already, guys? To a theater. Why not it's just say to the Walmart heirs, enough is enough. You own 41% of all the wealth in America. Uh, you know, you can continue to, you know, accumulate more wealth, but you're going to have to pay your workers at least what the minimum wage was in 1960, which in today's dollars would be $12.50 an hour. Hey, Tom, I want people to make money. I really do. But Walmart is, is a stepping stone. It's a beginning. It's not the end. The problem with our economy is that's not what I see when I walk through a Walmart, Neil. I don't see jobs because of the Obama economy. Neil, when I walk through a Walmart, killing our manufacturing. Neil, when I walk through a Walmart, I don't see 16 year olds just starting out. I see people in their, their 20s and their 30s and their 40s and their 50s and their 60s. I see the whole spectrum of American workers. And they're there because there's nothing else. They're desperate. I agree with you that we've that got a real serious Obama problem with the loss of our agree upon. There's nothing of else our because manufacturing our job sector. creators are not creating jobs because they're totally spooked with what's going on around them. We don't have job creators at the top, Neil. Well, the job they creators all to, they all went to the Asia. Job Let's bring them home. are the ones who are in Walmart buying things. Job creators are consumers. Our economy is driven by consumption. Now, if you want to talk about well, the job creators, let's pay the job creators $12.50 an hour instead of $8 an hour. Then you'll have more jobs. Them, let's get them working in companies that is adding value, like our manufacturing businesses, like our technology businesses. Hey, take that up with your Republican the buddies. They're the only jobs that are left is at Walmart. This is the Obama economy, and it's killing our people. Neil, I think you need to take that up with the Republican Party. When Nancy Pelosi was Speaker of the House, she passed out of the House. Uh, legislation that would have done away with the tax deduction 
that corporations get right now if they shut down U.S. factories and ship their operations overseas and would have increased and actually would have taxed them if unless they and would and would have given excuse me would have given them a tax deduction if they brought those jobs back home it was republicans in the senate who filibustered that piece of legislation it's the republicans who want to keep the jobs offshore not the democrats uh, uh, tom i respectfully disagree i was one of those manufacturers in asia that came home if we could just do and attract the people like me to come back home and i know what's going to take them to take to get them back home we have to have a simplified tax code that is competitive not raising taxes but having a competitive tax code we need to get this health care thing rewritten obamacare is going to scare our, our manufacturers offshore That's even more than they already are what it's going to scare them to one of the other out of the out of the 38 oecd countries we're the only one that doesn't have a national health care system it's going to scare them to what some other one, another one of those countries. highest tax country in the world. We have uh, the highest tax. That is absolutely not true, Neil. Japan. That is not true. That is absolutely not true. Of, of the richest, of the 38 richest countries in the world, we have the second lowest effective tax rate for corporations, and we have the lowest or the second lowest uh, tax rate, effective tax rate for the top one percent. You got people like Mitt Romney who are paying 15 percent in income taxes. You know, nobody. That's, you know, That's unfair because bus driver that, married that was not to a teacher pays income. more than that. And he was giving forty percent of his income to charities. Mitt Ra, and that yes, makes up does. for it. Therefore, we shouldn't charge him taxes. Come on, Neil. No, You're no. I, than hey, that. look, the capital gains is much different than ordinary. I mean, if we want to put yeah, you don't have to work to get it. The sidelines. We have to make it. We have to make it competitive for people to want to invest. But you people are not going to invest with all of this uncertainty and with a government oh, that's hostile to break. business. The the uncertainty. Hey, you know, this government wants to kill people like me. Okay, Neil. Uh, I I <laughs> you know I hope you're well defended if the government's coming to get you. Thanks a lot for being with us today. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me again. Good talking with you.